While property can be a sound investment, one of the biggest mistakes made by investors is buying with their heart and not their head. For more, let's bring in James Fitzgerald. James, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Thanks for having me, Ash. So James, a lot of investors didn't choose the right type of property. What's the biggest issue here? Well, I think most people do. They use emotion as a key driver, whereas at the end of the day, we're custodians say there is only truth in numbers. And as hard as it is, you've got to try and remove the emotion uh, when it comes to buying. So we, we generally tend to go off a few real handy tips and numbers that we uh, seem to look for uh, front, front of mind. Uh, the first one being to buy land because land at the end of the day is the only part of the investment or the property that's going to go up in value the buildings just depreciate at the end of the day and then in addition to that we want to be getting high population growth good jobs and infrastructure so that is sometimes hard to look at that objectively without emotion so what's the best way to avoid falling into that trap well, where you can try and rely on numbers. So rather than stories, because there is a lot of stories out there, we love telling stories when it comes to real estate. Look at the numbers. So specifically, you'd be wanting to target an area that's got maybe six, eight, even 10% per annum population growth. That's a number. That means it's a growing area with lots of demand for housing. Uh, in addition to that, you want to have what we call multiple job clusters, which is multiple areas that are creating hundreds, if not thousands of jobs per year. So we don't just want the capital city or local jobs, but multiple job clusters. And then finally, we want to be looking at how much is being invested in infrastructure, both by governments, but also by private companies and community organisations. So. Uh, Ash, they're the numbers that we look for. Uh, it is, however, I do, I do admit, it is a little bit harder uh, when it comes to actually doing it to take the emotion out, but that's where people could start. So why is it so important to have a large land component when it comes to an investment property? Well, again, not, not to bang on, but uh, it is just coming down to the numbers. So Ash, if you looked at, say, the share market over the last 30 years, it would have increased by roughly 6% per annum, depending on which period you look at. House prices just above 7%, so not too dissimilar. Whereas if you actually broke down the land component of the real estate, you'd see uh, an increase in value of maybe 9 to 10%, depending on the capital city, which is more than 50% the type of return that you'd be seeing out of the share market and housing as a general category of investment. So the land, you know, really it has outperformed all of those other asset classes. So if you can try and get sort of minimum 40% of the property value in the land, it's just going to put you in a really good position when it comes to the growth prospects over the next five, 10 years plus. And have we seen any adjustment in those land values off the back of the pandemic at all? Have those trends improved? Yeah, we have. So in the past, uh, call it uh, 60 days, we've seen the median house price go up by about three or 4% in most capital cities to the end of February. Now, unfortunately, units haven't fared so well. In fact, units would be maybe slightly uh, below what they were as a value this time last year, whereas housing is about 4% up. So we're certainly seeing that people are probably moving away from the inner city units looking for a little bit more space, um, no doubt in part due to the fact that working from home is probably gonna play a bit more of a role in our lives in some capacity over the next decade. Well, James, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me, Ash.